In my Warlock vs. Sorcerer video, somebody said that the Wizard is the superior spellcasting class. And that's rough to take in. I don't deny that the Wizard has certain things that make it good. Um, but when it comes to being a better class overall, you have to look at more than just what I looked at in the Warlock and Sorcerer video, which was combat capabilities. Um, in that video, we were trying to decide which one was the better spellcaster, not the better class. And there's a slight difference to that. So let's break this down a little bit and see which one's the best class overall. So the first thing we need to look at is something that's not inherently combat oriented, and that's skill proficiencies. So when it comes to skill proficiencies, the better class is going to be whichever one is, has the highest stat or the highest attribute for the better skill proficiencies. And so charisma is going to be uh, sorcerer's highest stat because it's its spellcasting modifier. So it should be the highest stat. Whereas wizard spellcasting modifier is intelligence, so it should be the highest stat. Now, I say should. Obviously, there are some people who don't do that. Um, I know I've played before with a, with a DM that they, they did the, the roll way of getting your stats, but they did it in, in order. So your first roll, that was going to be your strength, and your second roll was your dexterity, and so on and so forth. So you didn't really get to decide where, what was going in what stat, what attribute. Um, and then he also made us pick our class before we rolled, which made for some really janky combat, so I wouldn't recommend that, but I've seen it happen. Now, intelligence has five skill proficiencies under its little umbrella. And charisma only has four. And then so it makes it seem like the wizard's got it, got the sorcerer beat, except for when you look at the the intelligence-based skill proficiencies, the only ones that are really used are Arcana and Investigation, and uh, from what I've seen, they're both barely used at that. A lot of people can't seem to tell the difference between Investigation and Perception, and the DMs don't want to correct them most of the time. Um, I've seen a lot of Perception checks that should have been Investigation checks. So there's a little bit of confusion there. But even still, it still doesn't get used, even if it was used correctly, it still wouldn't get used as much as some of the charisma uh, skill proficiencies, which charisma's got persuasion, it's got deception, it's got intimidation, and it's fourth one's performance, which doesn't get used too terribly often outside of being a bard trying to make some easy money out on the street. Not like that. Um, <laughs> but charisma has the most used outside of combat uh, or not even slightly combat adjacent uh, skill proficiencies. You're, you think you're being overcharged at the blacksmith for your new weapon. Persuasion check. Uh, you're trying to talk somebody into doing something for you or you're trying to infiltrate something. Deception check. You want somebody to leave you alone and you're just going to be angry with it, intimidation check. I personally believe intimidation should be done with strength, but whatever, Barbarian has primal knowledge now that lets them do that, so fine, whatever. Um, that's a conversation for a different time. So, in my opinion, when it comes to skill proficiencies, Sorcerer's got Wizard Beat all day, every day. And then when we go to backstories, uh, I've said it before, and in the comments of, of my last video, of, in the comments of my Warlock versus Sorcerer video, you guys did give me some very interesting uh, Sorcerer backstories um, on how they would have gotten their magic. Uh, and with the upcoming Player's Handbook coming out in a handful of months, um, there's now four core 
uh, subclasses for sorcerers. And some of them aren't bloodline related, so it's a lot easier to make a more interesting backstory on how you got your magic as a sorcerer now. But I would still argue that it's going to be more interesting as a wizard. Because yeah, you got your magic by studying, but where did you study? How did you study? Who did you study with? You know, there's so much you can do to alter your story and to make it more in-depth and more interesting than you can with the sorcerer. And backstory doesn't really have anything to do with combat or non-combat, really. It doesn't really change a whole lot. It could change whether or not you get side quests or how your side quests for your character growth works. But aside from that, it doesn't really change anything. I just think it's really cool. And so on that one, the wizard wins. And once again, this is just my opinion. I know a lot of you people, a lot of you players have a um, disposition towards sorcerer backstories. Which is fair. It's totally fair. I still think they're boring, but teach their own. Um, and then wizards have a massive, devastatingly massive spell list. Um, massive spell list. And they have some of the hardest hitting spells in that spell list, which they better. Um, last I looked, and these numbers are absolutely not correct anymore. Um, but I won't have the exact numbers until the new player's handbook comes out. But the last I checked, um, Wizard's spell list was like 250 something, like 252, I think. Whereas the Sorcerer's spell list was like 160. That's a 92 spell difference. That is huge. And the wizards know how to use their spells. Make no mistake on that. Especially with some of the subclasses that are coming in the player's handbook. Now, keep in mind, we still don't have all of the information on the spell, on the spell list, on the subclasses. We don't have all the information. And we probably won't for a while. Um, I touched on this in my uh, backwards compatibility video, but only 11 people got early copies of the player's handbook. I don't even know if all of them got early copies. Most of them haven't straight up said they got early copies. One of them said that he got an early copy. The rest of them haven't said anything about getting any information, but on D&D Beyond, they have said, you know, these people have them. Most of them aren't saying anything yet. I assume they've got videos on the way. So, hopefully we'll get some more information soon, before September, we'll see what happens. Um, so we don't have all of the information on subclasses or spell lists. We do know that there is a lot more spells. The Dungeons & Dragons design team said that there's 100 pages of spells in the player's handbook. That doesn't mean a whole lot to me, because how big are these, the spell descriptions? That doesn't necessarily mean that they're adding a lot of spells. It could mean they made the font a little bit bigger. The spell descriptions are a little bit more in depth, you know? I'm sure there's going to be a huge overhaul of spells. And that's great. We need more of them. The Sorcerer only has one, one Sorcerer exclusive spell. And it's Chaos Bolt. Um... I don't... I don't know a whole lot about Chaos Bolt because it's been a while since I've played. It's been even longer since I've played a Sorcerer. Uh, and Chaos Bolt wasn't a thing when I did that because it came in with Xanthar's Guide to Everything. But it, as I recall, it is a first level spell. So you get it at level 1 if you want. Uh, and that is massive because it does 2d8 plus 1d6 damage at first level. Um, and when you roll those 3 dice, you pick a d8. And that's going to decide the damage type. If you roll two d8s, if both of those d8s are 8s, um, it bounces to another nearby target. So you could potentially hit two targets for 2d8 plus 1d6 damage at level 1. That means that at max level, you're doing, was that, 22 damage? Uh, if you roll as high as you can, you know, two 8s and a 6. That is massive 
for level one. Absolutely massive. This is going to be the hardest hitting first level spell. Um, assuming it makes it into the new player's handbook, which once again, we don't know. But this is the hardest hitting first level spell. Um, so it's going to be the hardest hitting spell you can take until you get access to your second level spells. And I want to say, I can't be certain because I don't know all 300 plus spells that are in the game. Chaos Bolt's going to be the hardest hitting spell until you hit like third level spell slots. So again, I could be wrong. Quote me on it if you want. But it is a backbreaking spell that if you don't take it as a sorcerer, it, what are you doing with your life, right? So, but then Wizard has just a disgusting amount of spells more than the sorcerer. So they have more versatility. Um, but sorcerers do still have their meta magic. Which, as we talked about in the Warlock vs. Sorcerer video, meta magic is broken. It is so fun and gives the Sorcerer a new amount of versatility that they didn't otherwise have before. Um, it greatly increases their combat potential. And it's just fun. It's just fun. Um, if I remember correctly, the Wizard has a couple more spell slots than the Sorcerer, not a staggering amount. But even with Chaos Bolt and Meta Magic, I would still argue that the Wizard is more competent in battle as far as damage dealing goes. But damage dealing only does you so much good if, and this is a huge if for the Wizard, you have the health to stay on your feet and the wizard doesn't now i'm not saying that the sorcerer has a huge amount of health but their health pool is inherently bigger than the wizards and with them getting rid of uh certain wizard subclasses that would potentially help with their severely lacking hit points um they're going to continue staying tissue paper thin for a while to come as unfortunate as that is. And so when you account for their lack of health, their staggering damage kind of seems less helpful. Because it doesn't matter how much damage you can do if a stray arrow can, you know, incapacitate you. And judging by my Cleric versus Druid video, a lot of people feel like you shouldn't heal in combat. And they're so wrong. Um, because of things like this, they are so wrong. But I understand where they're coming from. So if you've got a healer that refuses to heal in combat, and you're a wizard, and you get incapacitated by one arrow before you even had a turn to utilize your massive spell list, or your subclasses that increases the damage of some of your spells, none of it matters. None of it matters. And you're far likely to get one shot at as a wizard than you are as a sorcerer solely because the sorcerer's health pool starts off bigger. It has the capability of being bigger. That's not to say that they're better because of that, but they can potentially stay in the fight longer, which drastically increases their combat potential. If they each get out one spell and they both do, let's say, six damage with their one spell, and then the wizard goes down after their first turn. That means in that one combat, they did one spell. They attacked one time. They did six damage. If the sorcerer gets out just one more spell and does another six damage, they've doubled the wizard's spell damage. They've, wiz they've doubled the wizard's combat potential, combat ability. The wizard is a fantastic class. And I recommend everyone play every class at least once. Every single class has its own merits and its own drawbacks. To say any one class is better than any other class is, in my mind, wrong. However, if you break it down on paper, uh, or in my case, whiteboard, 
the sorcerer comes out on top of the wizard ever so slightly. But this is all just theory. In practice, sometimes the wizard's going to be better. In fact, most times I would argue the wizard's going to be better than the sorcerer. In most cases, not all, but in most cases, the sorcerer's going to be or the wizard's going to be better. The sorcerer is going to underperform every time. Well, not every time, but most of the time. The wizard just has access to more stuff. It's got more versatility. So in combat, the wizard is going to be better in practice. But on whiteboard, the sorcerer wins out. So it really all depends on your play style, how you choose to play your, your characters, um, and how, how lucky you are, and whether or not you get hit. So the wizard does have a lot more of the uh, AC boosting spells to keep them alive, but that expense spell slot that it, that takes your action and that's that's another thing that needs to to come into play here is action economy if you both only have one action so you can only cast one spell but you're at a high enough level that you've got sorcery points for meta magic your one spell can be two spells you know you can twin your spell you can do more damage with your spell so early in sorcerer is better outside of combat combat potential it's better on paper late game wizards combat potential skyrockets still tissue paper thin but combat potential skyrockets it has the ability to do more damage than some of the any of the other classes right but this is just theory so if you think i'm wrong make a wizard do it make a wizard Prove me wrong. I would love for you to prove me wrong. I don't see enough wizards. So, put my theory to practice and prove me wrong. Thanks for watching.